Doma Sports Talk Worldwide with some news for the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now, if you've been here maybe five times or more, you've heard me say boxing to me is BTBG. I've said that since day one, basically, because that's what it really is to me or anybody who kind of pays attention to it. You see what happens with fighters that won't get fought and whatever. It's like a double standard in the sport, right? So, you know, when you see that, a lot of people can play dumb and play like they don't see it and argue with you and come in with comments or whatever. And But they, they know what time it is. But, you know, they can ignore it because it's swept under the rug for the most part. So when you see articles like I read today, it's very interesting. And it's coming from a two-time champ, you know, two-division champ, Andre Ward, former uh, pound pound number one. And still, even though he was, you know, former pound pound number one, in my uh, book, he's been underrated. He was better than that. You know, he's done a lot of great things in his career, Andre Ward. And, you know, he's a commentator now. So, um, you know, he's, he gave an article and he basically just straight up said, it. he said black boxers have been used. Uh, as villains, right, and be used as a villains, and he points to Floyd Mayweather as a perfect example. Bam, we always say that, and Floyd Mayweather, but I'm just going to read the article to you, just to let you see what he was saying. Well, anyway, let's go, and then we'll, go, we'll talk about it on the, on the back end of this article. So, Andre Warden says, black box have been used as villains for many, many years, while citing Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s career as, uh, as an example of the sport's prejudice. The former two-weight world champion has discussed his experience with racism and cur current uh, social injustice movement occurring around the world, sparked by the death of George Floyd, an unarmed, unarmed black man who died in police custody in Minneapolis on May 25th. And Andre Waters suggested boxing can contribute to the change by addressing its own prejudice and double standards, right? Let me keep on going down here and see what else. Um, what I've seen over the last two and a half weeks or so I've been uh, blessed by a lot of it. It's been really encouraging. It's given me a lot of hope, solidarity, that I see people standing in and walking in. But some of it's frankly broken my heart, you know. And he explains, you know, that he's the son of a black mother. I'm the son of a black mother and a white father. I had to deal with disdain, looks of disgust from blacks and whites. That was my reality growing up. Some of those looks turned into physical altercations with my father because he was not about that. He was not about injustice, racism, or divide. He would fight for it, right? From being raised by a man like that in my faith, I hate bias, I hate prejudice, I hate double standards of any kind. It's my life mission to not allow any of that to come out of me and also to fight for it and fight against it, right? <clears throat> so for the boxing community, if we want to affect change, we can start here at home. Myself, as well as many other African-American fighters, for many, many years, we've had to deal with the double standards a certain prejudice and certain bias. If an African American fighter is not a villain, if he's not a, a not boisterous, if if he is not jumping on tables doing crazy things at press conferences, he's not worth the price of admission. He's not worth your streaming by or pay per view by. That's something I detest. I personally have uh, protested uh, this this uh, this line of thinking. He's protested this line of thinking. Excuse me, guys. When Floyd Mayweather was Pretty Boy Floyd. Think about this. I say this all the time. Nobody paid attention. But all of a sudden, when he became the villain, when he became Money, May May Money Mayweather, now he was worth the price of admission to see him lose. Right? So, it goes on a little further. This is something that uh, that has bothered me. I protested against it. I should not be, it should not be the case. Not that I have the opportunity to mentor another African-American fighter and Shakur Stevenson, who won, by the way. We have these uh, discussions, and I encourage him all the time. Right. So bottom line is. That's what's happening in boxing. It's the truth. A lot of people, you know, we're going on about Deontay Wilder right now with Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury and, and the glove and the glove gate and all that. Nobody wants to even investigate it. The racist, racist emails from Golden Boy to Ring Magazine, two big, big entities in boxing. Nobody uh, talked about it. Now, we wonder why the boxers won't say something. And the boxers, you know, you can't say too much because it's their livelihood. You know, that's for people, you know, other people to say. But, you know, when you're doing that, we saw what happened to Colin Kaepernick by standing for something, right? Or kneeling for something, right? But at the end of the day, he was out of a job. <clears throat> and that could have happened to most boxers. Things are going to change now because uh, people are going to come out and say what's really going on all the time. 
with these pounders to them also, also complaining about. We are always talking about the fighters. You know, we talk about the dudes who don't want to fight people. Those are the ones that's high on the pound for pound list, and we know they don't want to fight people, you know. And, you know, we don't know any of the great boxers unless you're a boxing insider. You don't know any of the great boxers. You know, that's how that stuff has been going. You know, like, give, here's a, here's a fight, for example. <clears throat> Canelo versus Kovalev. First of all, that was the fight that made the, the undisputed fight between Canelo and Andre not happen on Canelo's uh, Mexican date in September. Right, so he didn't want to fight Andre, so he waited to November to fight Kovalev. Now, the point is not only that you didn't want to have an undisputed middleweight champion and that no one mentioned it, <clears throat> it's also Kovalev and Canelo <clears throat> in the lead up. We had to li uh, look at subtitles. We had to read the whole lead up. If you didn't speak Spanish or whatever Kovalev speaking, you didn't. Um, you do. You had to look at subtitles, right? So we'd rather look at subtitles than watch a guy. Here's a guy. A couple of guys. Americans, Olympian, one of them, you know what I mean? But we don't even want to understand English. We'd rather look at subtitles because we ain't going to give this guy an opportunity of greatness. That's what my last video was about, right? So you're looking at this. I mean, the USA is, is really bad. It's the worst, but there's racism all over the world. You see it right now when people are protesting all over the world. They're not only protesting about what's going on in America. They have their own issues. I told you in Europe, you know, you, they throw bananas on the pitch all the time. That's why a lot of people who are going in on Anthony Joshua, like you've never heard Anthony Joshua speak up against racism. You think it's the first time. That's not the case. So, you know, remedy your ignorance. Anthony Joshua has been speaking out against racism a long time. Now, I go in on Anthony Joshua because I didn't like this form of entitlement that he had, you know, because he was the biggest star. And, you know, they're talking to Dante Wilder like he was nothing. And those negotiations didn't happen because of Anthony Joshua. No doubt about it. Right. So that entitlement. But that didn't make me uh, not understand what this is as a man. He stood up for this. Anybody know Raheem Sterling, uh, British footballer? Joshua has had his back from day one because he's going through racism things and throwing bananas on the pitch or making ape sounds. So um, Joshua has been doing this before this. You know, it's not one of the guys who's just jumping on now because everyone's doing it. No, he was there before. But still. You had to get it, even though me knowing that, it still wasn't right for him to feel entitled. Because entitlement is what we're complaining about with some of these white people. Bottom line, it's the entitlement. That's what we don't like. So when the brothers are all of a sudden feeling entitled, then we got to we gotta stop him no matter what. You know what I mean? We got to at least let him know. That's our job to do so. So that's why we wasn't rolling with Anthony Joshua there. But I do know that he has been standing up for this for a long time. There's nothing new for him. So uh, I just wanted to make that clear because I might diss him in another video sooner or later. You know what I mean? But that uh, he's respected here for that. Um, so moving on along, you know, we got guards out here, you know, guarding the president that are not even police officers. Right. It's not even police officers. Um, you know, we don't give background checks to police officers nowadays. That's why that's the problem. Not background checks. You need a background check to work at McDonald's. But you can't, don't need one to be a police. Bottom line, they ask you, are you racist? Then you got a job. Same thing with Trump, with the people that work around him. There's nobody that he's hired that doesn't have a criminal background. Trump likes it if you're a criminal, because that means you step over a corpse to get to your goal. That's what that's all about, right? That's what, how he feels about that. I know that. I don't know the man. I just know him. So I've been saying this for two years. That's how it is. So all of these things that are happening that are right in front of our face and protests and things going all over the world and we've been seeing it for the longest, it's in boxing, just like Andre Ward said, just like a lot of people said. I call it BTBG, beat the black guy. Some call it coincidental list. Some call it other things. But that the bottom line is not right. And this whole thing that we're talking about is not right, right? It's not black, white, yellow, red. It's good or evil. And you pick a side. That's what it's all about. That's what the world was started with. For those who believe in God. There's a God. And there's an anti-God. Right? There's good and evil. And if you're on the side of good. Then the color of your skin will not change that. You feel me? Don't sports talk. Worldwide. And I'm about to y'all.